started recording. Hi everybody, welcome back to, I almost said Squat Cobbler, that would have been terrible. <laughs> that, <laughs> no, that, that would have been, no, no. Have, it is a very clean shaven Mike Valinsky this evening. So, um, no, this would be a solid battery, I'm Kelly at K-E-L-L-Y-T-H-U-L on Twitter and Instagram. And you're not Mike. Uh, no, I'm not Mike, I'm Gene. And I'm Y E U N G J E A N S on Instagram and Twitter. Excellent. All right. Um, you're going to have to help me out of the gate here. Uh, so, this is season three, episode four. Sabarosito? Am I close? Yeah. yeah, you got it. Yeah, how about that? <laughs> how about that? So, uh, so uh, interesting, uh, interesting episode. Uh, be in, um, what was your reaction overall? It was good. It was good. It, it just moved along a bit better than the last. The last one was just kind of slow and, and was putting things in place for, you know, other situations. So this was, this was good. It was moving along. Yeah. And I felt, so I kind of feel the same way. I don't, I don't mind the kind of, kind of leisurely pace as long as there's good payoffs for what they do. Uh, uh, and this one, I still think, is kind of loping along, but there's like it's it's pushing a lot of threads forward. So there's yeah. so there's there's enough you're having to jump in between different types of things. There's a lot of there's a lot of people in this particular episode. So um, I'll continue to do the thirty second recaps <laughs> until the point at which Gene says I will take the next one. So I'm sure that day will come, but if not, I sure. will continue to do that. Sure will. So, uh, let's give it a go, shall we? The 32nd-ish recap. Uh, this episode should have been called The Parade of Jerks, Jerk Number 1. Don Eladio, wow. Uh, he uh, compares Hector uh, against Gus, and Hector comes up wanting. Uh, Mike's starting to figure out that Stacy may be a money pit. Uh, Hector shows up at Polos Hermanos and makes it a fast exit food restaurant. Kyle has resting pissed face uh, during the Gus's Gipper speech. Uh, Mike herds Chuck with a drill in his house. Uh, and then there's a big baby conference at the end where everyone's a big baby except Kim and Chuck and Howard are the particularly most annoying jerks in there. And it ends with bingo, which means Jim and Chuck are Jim and Jim and Kim are happy, but we're going to have to figure out why next episode. Well oh, done. That was ish. Resting pissed face is my <laughs> favorite. <laughs> Kyle did look very angry. Yes. Yeah. I th- I th- I think it's Lyle. I'm, I could be wrong. Uh, I thought oh, it was Lyle. I think it's Lyle. I don't know. Uh, Lyle or Kyle? Yes, Lyle. Because well, I put angry Lyle down. Yeah. You're right. Sorry. He. Uh, you know we're. <laughs> <Who is it>? <laughs> Kyle. <laughs> He's, he acts like a Kyle. He looks like a Kyle. <laughs> Sorry for any of our listeners named Kyle, but. And an extended invitation for, to any of our listeners who are named Karen. We're sorry that, <laughs> that things have worked out the way they've worked out for you because it's not fair. <laughs> we sure. feel your pain, so it's not cool at all. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was it was a fun episode. Um, we get uh, I don't know. I like Don Eladio scenes, but the, I, I, he's by the pool too much for me. <laughs> he's in swimming trunks too much for me. Um, he is a creepy slash scary character. Uh, yes. Your thoughts on Don Eladio? <laughs> no, I, I think I think creepy is definitely in there. His he's uh, his, and and it's a weird kind of dichotomy with him because uh, he's not wearing anything threatening because he's half naked constantly, 
and he's also got like perfect teeth with this perfect smile and yet he's smarmy and gross and it's and so it, it's really well done i feel because it's you're uneasy with that kind of combination it's much easier with hector who just looks like a crotchety old man and really is a crotchety old man like in the nth degree but you know this is the this is a little bit different and it doesn't it doesn't sit well it doesn't gel quite the way that you need it to um to kind of go one way or the other yeah it's um it it doesn't and um he also has this habit of telling jokes that i think he knows are really not funny at all and really aren't jokes and really aren't jokes and looking at people not expecting them to laugh it's this weird thing because it's just this parade of oh god here comes a don Eladio joke so those are <laughs> those are always fun and that that he does that throughout the episode um it was kind of neat to see mike with his uh, granddaughter again uh, do, doing that um you do kind of wonder if Stacy's working him a little bit uh, in terms of playing on his guilt to improve her position. It's never made it entirely clear, but there's little hints here and there that she might be taking a little bit of advantage of Mike, but he may not mind either. Then there's the... I, 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 go I ahead. Say, I, I think she knows that he feels like he owes her, so he, she's kind of using that a little bit. Yeah, yeah, just leaning into it a little. Yeah, a yeah. Ton, but... So Hector's visit oh. to po- oh yes. Okay. All right. Oh no. Go ahead because um, I'll ask after this. Okay. Where okay. Uh, Hector's visit to Los Polos Hermanos. Um, a real would really have sucked if you'd been grabbing your breakfast at Polos Hermanos that day. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of what was in those baskets was fried chicken. So no. So it must maybe it was lunch. It was lunch. <laughs> it was lunch. Well, I don't. Yeah. But it was, it was interesting that that because you saw a couple people leave. Um, and you know, it was interesting that there was all the food was le- like everybody, everybody left, you know, um, it was sort of, you know, you kind of got the idea that people were starting to get uncomfortable, but, um, there was, there was more of a stampeding herd out the door really <laughs> since nobody finished eating. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Which, and again, I look at this world much different than those folks like Lan or jeans, uh, last episode. She was spying Jimmy's wallet when he was paying, and I was just looking at what a great deal <laughs> he was getting <laughs> for the special. On this one, I'm like, "You're leaving your food. Oh, it's okay if you need to leave. Great, take your basket with you. <laughs> you know, you gotta, <laughs> you, you gotta do that." So um, I would have, I would, because those were full. Most of the baskets were left were pretty full. So, sure. so I think his attendance is going to be kind of dropped down there for a little while. Uh, we'll see. Uh, and so Hector does about everything humanly possible to provoke Gus. And yeah. Gus keeps it all all under control. Uh, did you pick up, the, so he, as he's cleaning up after they leave, he, he shoots a basket with some of the garbage. Yeah. Uh, is yeah. that just to kind of reinforce I'm, I'm not flustered? I think, you know, I think for him, um, you know, uh, and, and he tells you later exactly what he's thinking because because he has a conversation with Mike that tells you why he did not want Hector to be shot. Um, and so, to me, him sort of shooting that because you don't do that unless you're in a unless you're in a good mood. Nobody nobody's like woo shoot a basket if they're pissed off. That's not how that works. Like it's not like you're, you know people throw things when they're pissed off. They don't shoot baskets yeah. like with a nice little arc and you know. To me, that was. This is going exactly the way I want it to. This is the I, I've gotten under his skin, and that's where I want it to be. I think at yeah, it's, the Gus always has kind of wheels within wheels going, so I, I think yes. that's a pretty good call on that. So they kind of, we kind of stay with him in the show. That when we we come back, it's the aftermath. It's the next day at Polos and. So I'm a little confused how all the workers can be in doing the work and they've kept the door lock and Gus has to unlock it again, but maybe that makes sense. I don't know. I a, well, Lyle, I got it right. Yeah. Lyle with an O. Um, he's an assistant manager, so he probably has a key. That would, would be my guess. Yeah. I just I thought they would have left it un- unlocked for the boss, but or maybe they didn't know he was coming that morning. So but I, you know, I, we always ended up locking like you know when I, any play anytime I've worked in like any type of retail situation, the door's locked until until you're open. Until you're open. So, okay, fair yeah. enough. Yeah. 
So it is just, I don't know, there's this chilling Gus thing uh, when he's in his kind of um, non-menacing Gus, but it's still kind of serious Gus thing. And he's like, you know, if any of you need counseling, <laughs> you know. Well, I know. So it's just, it just, it did not feel like a warm offer. It, I felt, I felt like it was. I, he's really, the, the thing is. Well, like I think he, 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 yeah, go ahead. I mean, he's, he's. <laughs> he runs a cartel. Yeah. And yet, you know, he wants to make sure that all of his employees are taken care of and they're taken care of properly. He takes his legitimate business extremely seriously, which kind of separates him, you know, leaps and bounds from, from Hector. Um, and I think he's he really doesn't want the complaints. And he's really, so, so it might be somewhat self-serving. I think he is concerned for them. I think he, yeah. you know, it, you know, he definitely wants to take care of people um but on the other hand he can't afford people running around and talking about it he can't afford that type of publicity so i think it was kind of two-pronged you know and, okay. and he is remarkably cold <laughs> it's just, and that's, i mean that's the thing because it, it probably wasn't the warm thing it was that that just kind of deadpan delivery of um okay if you need counseling here's what you need to do i do i do think he legitimately he, you know, there he views those people as civilians. They shouldn't be part of this. Puts them at risk. It puts Gus at risk. It puts the cartel at risk. It's all a lot and of problems. Still, and still, his responsibility. Yeah. I felt like he still, you know, he still really sees them as his responsibility, not just you know a co- you know a, a, a cover or a front, but you know he treats them like human beings, not like. You know, a lot of places, uh, fast food places, treat their employees like they're expendable. You know, yeah. so it's yeah. The twenty four hours of overtime yeah. was a pretty sweet deal. So, so that uh, no uh, doubt. But uh, <laughs> but uh, small recompense for having to spend quality time with Hector Salamanca. <laughs> I guess it's just he's a he's a thing. But Kyle, man, to, he's, he wasn't having it. I wanted to ask you, um, would you have bought? speech that he gave to his employees to you know sort of smooth things over about what had happened and and paying money to people and like you know i because because it's that was some shady shady shit and i have to say like i don't know that any excuse that he would have given me would made me to believe that they were not going to come back yeah and it seems like a, a, a promise you want to be careful making and uh yes. dealing with the salamancas i I don't think you can ever predict <laughs> behavior, so I, I don't think I was. I wouldn't. I don't think I would have been thrown out. They'll never come back. Uh, thing there. Uh, of course, I wouldn't have bought it because I saw him talk to Hector. But you know, <laughs> but I have an edge on his employees. <laughs> they're they're not watching the show. I am. Um, but if I was, yeah, I I think I, I'm not sure I would have believed it wrapped up as tidy as it did, uh, just because of. Um, because I, you know, as Gus described it, once he said, no, I will not pay you, they, they ran away like the cowards they they were. I'm pretty sure if they sauntered out of Polos, they were not looking scared, <laughs> you know, <laughs> would be my would be my guess. But, um, yeah, I I wouldn't have probably bought entirely into it, but I would have said, I'm going to at least be hopeful that, okay, maybe it's resolved, but I... I'd be worried that it'd show up again. And I think, I don't think, uh, uh, now you you got me doing it, Kyle. (laughs) I don't think, I don't think Lyle bought it entirely, or at least he just looked mad. I I think he was unhappy that the the purity of Polos Hermanos had been compromised by these ruffians. So, (laughs) we don't get, we don't get much of, um, Francesca, uh, in this episode, but you just, you know, you, you hear her just in the background. Talking about yeah. Pomeranians and and it's just so patient. she's killing it. She is just totally killed. I feel so sorry for her that, that Jimmy yeah. slash Saul's going to break her. That's a real shame. Um, and then the magic scene of all of it for this episode is that when when the creme de la creme, Jimmy tells Kim, "Don't worry, we got the creme de la creme on this. It's Mike," and he. Uh, uh, He's there to take pictures of Chuck's uh, house, 
and has to find ways to keep Chuck at bay. And turns out that a battery power drill is a pretty powerful mechanism to hurt Chuck. I did. I did want to say uh, my note for for this particular scene was Mr. No Nonsense meets Mr. All Nonsense. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's what it feels like. It, it's just this this ultimate. Like if you were going to find somebody who could probably be you know like least compatible with Chuck and his imaginary pains and you know sort of situation sorry my cat is chirping in her sleep i don't know if you can hear that no, okay good. um and uh if you could find somebody who would be least compatible with someone who had sort of you know this this pampered existence with you know lofty sort of kind of idealistic ridiculous goals and and you know has enough time and money to make up things like this that that would be Mike. <laughs> Mike is the exact opposite of that. He's just like, you know, everything is minimal and plus then he sees sort of, you know, the, the most, you know, brass tacks as they like to say in this show, you know, and, and it, it's funny to have the two of them together. It's just, you know, worlds collide and it's, it's just like the best thing ever, I have to say. It's a pretty magical pairing. <laughs> you know, it is. Without a doubt. Um, and but then, because you know that, I mean, this has to be like the person Mike would be least interested in spending time with ever. Right. But when afforded an opportunity to kind of unload, because Jimmy was trying to get him to. What do you think of him? Yeah. Right. What and, do you think of him? But that's also kind of you know Mike's. That's not going to be how Mike plays things. You know, he's just not going to kind of rip on somebody. But uh, yeah. I, I feel like he he could definitely. I mean he you know he he called Francesca a pip, so I feel like he could, but I also feel like he doesn't want to bond with Jimmy at all. That's fair. <laughs> and then we get to this last. Go ahead. No, I was just gonna say I I, I feel like you know, there's there's a situation between the two of them where they're sort of like you know, necessary evils and Julie wants to be Mike's friend, but Mike just knows her. He just knows that this is not a good thing to do. Like, you know, and, and as much as he might agree with with Jimmy, I think he's gotten enough of a feel for him that this is not a puddle you want to step into. Yeah. And Jimmy very much wants him to be his best friend though. You know, right? He's so yeah. lonely. I feel sorry for him. <laughs> he needs a guy friend. He, he lost his he does. his buddy up in Chicago. Um, right. So he needs, which Mike's kind of the opposite of him as well. But still, uh, so that's a shame. But there, so the episode wraps up with a very irritating scene. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah, yeah where uh, they're kind of finalizing everything and Chuck and Howard are just nitpicking everything from like a couple dollars difference on what the damages are to the words destroyed versus damaged and oh they were but this uh, judge seems like so biased towards Chuck it's disgusting <laughs> I don't I think she's a judge. I, th- I think she, because she's the DA, so I think it was kind of up to her to, because they brought, they brought her in. That's hey. Um, yep. And I, I really, for as someone who is, you know, who likes to talk about being an officer of the court and who, you know, holds herself to very high professional standards, I really did not feel it was her place to step in and chide Jimmy into an apology to his brother because. I, you know, for as much as, yes, this is her case, I think, you know, any lawyer can tell you family business is family business and it runs deep. And, and really, you have no business taking sides in family feuds because stuff is, this stuff is ancient. It's, it, it's, it starts in the cribs. It starts in the plate pens. And you have, you, you know, there's, and I, I mean, I feel that way about, you know, like anytime someone's kind of PMing about, about siblings, I'm, I'm, trying to be supportive but you know you, you know this has gone on for a long time you know that there's there's push and pull i mean anybody who has kids knows that there's lots of push and pull 
there's lots of things going on. And for her to step in and be like, I don't think that you gave him a heartfelt apology was just, I feel highly unnecessary. I, I really feel like that was not her place at all. Yeah, and uh, I agree. And, and while Jimmy had to kind of work to get it out, I think he, you know, made lemonade out of lemons in that as he delivered his apology, he put it in the wrapper of how brothers should treat each other. <laughs> you know, yes. So, yes. so I think that there was a, a major component of um, there are things brothers should and should not do to each other. And, right. uh, <laughs> but Chuck's not going <laughs> to pick up on that do you feel like like chuck would pick that up because i don't feel like chuck's gonna pick up what he's putting Uh, down i really feel like that would go right over chuck's head because he's so self-righteous no i think because in his heart i mean all these actors are so great uh so i think michael mckeon um i i think you saw like just a hint of it starting to land but then got chucked away you know it was just it was like it's like okay i can kind of see your point but that's just really not how this how i'm going to view this thing at all so so i think there might have been a glimmer of of recognition of what he was saying about brother treatment but uh it did not last long and it moved right. back to i need to get that cassette tape reimbursed and i need to to do this and then howard and you know howard is i mean howard chuck is so condescending to kim and there's so many times when they're condescending to kim throughout this entire series and you know they're they're at the end and she's like well i know this is your first one of these and so you know it's just like shut up but (laughs) but i don't know exactly what they were going for uh but apparently jim and kim really jimmy and kim really want the tape and evidence and they made it very clear that that's what's going to happen um and they that ended with a bingo they were you know kim broke into a smile at the end so it will be interesting to see uh why they uh why they're happy about that yep do you have a quote of the show uh bullet to the head would uh would have been far too humane that's my embroidered pillow for the day that's that's typically grim for you yeah, it's the <laughs> it's the kind of quote i see you gravitating towards yeah that makes good sense um uh i'm giving it a remorse pass i thought that that was a pretty good line as jimmy was reading that um but i have to and it was in context more than anything else uh so, so mike is gone in and, and got these shots and they're they're really good and jimmy's being you know he's kind of starting to get into Saul mode and Jimmy mode and just kind of rambling on and he's going through the pictures making commentary on it and then about half halfway through he's like you know you know at some point we should talk about the rule of thirds <laughs> from, from a photography which I just thought uh if you're uh, if you're vaguely familiar with photography there's some discussion around r- the uh, rule of thirds and uh, how you kind of prop a photo or, or set up a subject and I just if there was ever a piece of information that Mike would be less interested in, I don't know what it would be. <laughs> so I just, I just I always chuckle when that goes in because he say it to somebody who could care less and I do it, but I just love it. So I'm going to go with the rule of thirds quote. <laughs> it was good. It was good. Well, especially since, I mean, Mike is holding a drill in one hand he's going, rrr, 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 and he's taking, a, he's taking a picture with a disposable camera on the other. So, I mean, the fact that you could actually even tell what was in them was kind of amazing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and it was that fine yellow box flash cube camera of the day. <laughs> so, yes. so focal length. Who knows? You know, it, it could be a little not like the the super powerful things we all are carrying around today. So, <laughs> so thanks, Jeans, again for uh, doing this with me. Really enjoy talking through these episodes uh, with you. And thanks to anybody who's watched the video. Thank you. I'm having a lot of fun with this. I'm I'm glad we're back at it. Definitely.